Hello, and welcome to Season 3 of Flyer Sports here on Flyer TV. We are glad to be with you again, covering UD Athletics. On today's episode, we'll be discussing the great start of the season for both the women's soccer and volleyball programs, as well as touch on the lackluster starts for men's soccer and the football program. To get things started, let's break down the impressive start that the women's volleyball team has gotten off to. They began their 2023 campaign with five wins. Their only loss was a tight five-set battle with 12th ranked Marquette. The Flyers have already taken down a top 25 opponent in number 24 ranked Western Kentucky, which was a dominant three-set performance for the Flyers. Some standout performers for Dayton so far have been outside hitters Lexi Amadovar and Taylor Russell. Amadovar is back to her usual form. She's currently hitting almost four kills per set on a 253 efficiency. Taylor Russell is having a breakout start to the season. Russell's playing her best volleyball of her career for the Flyers, hitting for three kills per set on 312 efficiency. Russell also has eight aces for the Flyers as they dominate behind the line. The Flyers are anchored by some great defensive play from their front row. Middle blockers Elena Yates and Amelia Moore have 27 total blocks apiece, with Russell, Amadovar, Liana Sarkeesian, and Alyssa Miller all contributing double-digit blocks. New additions to the starting lineup, Liana Sarkeesian and Gabby Arroyo, have contributed greatly in the young season. Arroyo has greatly added to the dominant serving in the back row play for the Flyers. She's currently averaging two digs per set and leads the team with nine service aces. The six foot four Sarkissian has added much needed height to the Flyers' front row. She also has stepped in as another offensive weapon for Dayton, hitting from the right side. This year, Alyssa Miller has cemented herself as the Flyers' lone setter, running the offense efficiently and effectively. Miller has posted three 50 plus assist games so far in the Flyers' short season. Miller leads the A-10 in total assists and ranks second in the conference in assists per set. Recently, the Flyers went unbeaten in the Dayton Flyer Classic. This featured a four-set win over North Dakota State, a sweep over Butler, and an intense five-set comeback win over Ohio University. They take on the second-ranked Louisville Cardinals on Wednesday night. First serve is at 7 p.m. Moving on to another Flyer team that is off to a hot start, the women's soccer team has remained unbeaten in their first six games. They have five wins on the season and one tie against a Big Ten team in the University of Illinois. The Flyers' red-hot offense has led the way as the team has scored at least three goals in four of their six games. This is a good sign considering the absence of former A-10 Player of the Year, Atala Jamelli, who transferred to Alabama in the spring. Standout players early on have been A-10 Offensive Player of the Week, Noel Blaine, who has scored four goals paired with an assist. Marin Westner has three goals with two assists. Maddie Wilson is also back from an ACL tear and has already added two goals and three assists for the Flyers. The Flyers have Power 5 wins over Cincinnati and Louisville. The Flyers dominated against the Bearcats, picking up a 4-1 win with Marion Westner scoring two goals and assisting on another. Against the Cardinals, the Flyers got out to an early 1-0 lead. Belaney Huber scored the game winner for the Flyers in the 86th minute. They finished the game with a 2-1 win. The women's soccer team has a few exciting matches coming up. They have a home contest against IUPUI on Thursday at 7 p.m. They have a good weekend contest against Michigan State as the teams hit the road. We'll see if the Flyers could pick up a third Power 5 win against the Spartans of the Big Ten. Now on to men's soccer. The team has struggled out of the gate, only managing one win over IUPUI in their first four matches. The Flyers have dropped two and managed a mere draw at home against California State University Northridge. The team's latest performance was a 0-3 loss at home to Milwaukee. The Flyers have been outscored by their opponents despite having a significant advantage in shot output. Coach Curry hopes to turn things around as his team heads to East Lansing this Thursday for a battle against the Spartans. Conference play is right around the corner for the Flyers. They hope to steady the ship and get this bumpy start behind them. The guys will only have eight A-10 regular season matches. It's safe to say that there's a little room for error if they're to meet their expectations for the year. And finally, for football. The Trevor Andrews-led Flyers got shut out by the Illinois State Redbirds. The Flyers lost 41 to nothing. Dayton only put up 207 yards of offense and allowed 473 yards to the Redbirds. The Flyers will have a chance to get back on track in their home opener against Central State. That game will be played this Saturday at 1 p.m. And a big chance for the men's football team to kind of get back on track with their first home game of the season. That'll be this Saturday. But let's start with women's volleyball, who has been on fire lately. Four straight wins in that Dayton Classic that we saw this past weekend, and a thriller beating Ohio. They were down two sets to nothing, and were able to, you know, scorch up three and get a big in-state win against Ohio. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. I think that they really brought their best game this weekend, uh, got a big win over North Dakota State. 
Um, and yeah, a lot of tight volleyball matches. Like you said, came back uh, down two to one um, and, and was able to eke out the last two sets. Uh, but also some really dominant play uh, last week, a few in, in the prior weeks. Uh, taking down number 24, Western Kentucky, we touched on it a little bit. That was a three-set win, uh, that last set being 25-11. to 11, Just really top-tier play against a ranked opponent. Yeah, and that was also, you know, 2-0 and going into the beginning of that Invitational. And then obviously playing Marquette, the number 12 team in the country. Tough game right there. They were actually down 14-8 to in that last set, able to get back to 14-14. But Marquette obviously took the win and only lost for the Dayton Flyers on the year. And with, you know, the veteran play, obviously we talked about Lexi Almodovar and Amelia Moore. They've been big for the Dayton Flyers in their entire career. But this year, it feels like they, compared to last year, have gotten so much more depth. And that really starts with Alyssa Miller and Taylor Russell. Yeah, absolutely. Alyssa Miller, like we said, stepping in, the lone setter for the Flyers this year. They're running a 5-1 formation, so she's on the floor essentially the entire time. Uh, but I think Elena Yates really stepped up in the front row. She's getting the start uh, ahead of Amelia Moore. Uh, both of them uh, have equal kills uh, this year. So, I mean, two really equal middles. That's something we haven't really seen in the past. Amelia Moore has had to carry that load. Uh, and then Liana Sarkissian, we mentioned her as well, uh, really stepped in on the right side. At six foot four, adds a ton of size uh, to the Flyer team. And I know last season we talked about um, how when they played some Power 5 teams, um, and, and even in in-conference play against Loyola Chicago uh, and SLU and I want to say even VCU, um, you know, their size was kind of a, a detriment to that team. Um, and we had a really high-powered offense, uh, but the size, especially on blocking um, and just adding more and more weapons, uh, Liana Sarkissian and then Taylor Russell as well, been great additions. Yeah, and they've been on a roll lately, but they will have a huge matchup tomorrow night against the Louisville Cardinals. Sean, what are we expecting that one? Obviously, the number two team in the country Coming on to Frederick Center, taking on the Dayton Flyers, what do you got? Uh, I think the big thing is take a set. I mean, I think that's a that's a great goal. I mean, I don't know, as a Flyer fan, I don't know if this is one going into it saying, hey, we're going to come in, win this game against you know the number two team in the country. I think that we can absolutely take a set. Uh, I think winning against number 24 Western in three, I think that speaks to the volume of high-level volleyball that they can play. They can play consistently. Um, you know, and finish a full match, never let off of the gas. Again, the third set was the one that was 25-11. You know, it wasn't first and it got closer, closer, closer. Um, you know, they really put that gas pedal to the floor. Um, so I, I think it would be really big to take a set because if we can get a set off of them, uh, that means you can win a match off of a team like that and of that quality. Absolutely. And, you know, that squad, they when it comes to non-conference schedule, I mean, they schedule them all and we'll see big tests tomorrow for the women's volleyball team. Let's take a look at the women's soccer team who, again, Maybe the hottest team when it comes to Dayton sports. They have been fantastic as of late, including their last win, which is against Wright State. That was a 3-0 to zero win. Um, and you talk about the sophomore class. Obviously, Marion Westner earning A-10 Offensive Player of the Week uh, in the first week of the season. And they were, you know, got out to a hot start, beat Louisville, beat Cincinnati again. Those are two yeah. Power 5 teams and a great start for the women's soccer team. But this past week, Noel Blaine took it all for the Dayton Flyers. Yeah, absolutely. Already up to four goals and adding an assist. And the players that we mentioned earlier in the episode, you know, nobody's just scoring or just assisting. Everybody's kind of got a hand uh, in all sorts of play for the Flyers. And they've also been down a little bit. Alicia Donnelly uh, missed a match or two. She had, you know, a little injury, um, and she's back on the field for the Flyers. And, you know, I think that's crucial as uh, someone who's likely looked at as their captain. But like you said, they're 5-0-1 right now, even with some players a little dinged up early on the season and probably some chemistry still coming together. They've really excelled. Yeah, and the only tie of the year came to the University of Illinois on that Sunday match, 0-0 uh, at Beaujon Field. But I mean, you talk about where they were last year, and obviously you, 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 you compare them to St. Louis, and they are number two in the preseason poll for the A-10 rankings. And St. Louis, again, has always been the top dog when you talk about A-10 women's soccer and also A-10 men's soccer. And obviously losing Atala Jamelli was a big blow for Coach Goltz and his squad, but you got a lot of players returning, including Batula Reda, who has been fantastic for the Flyers in her sophomore campaign. Absolutely. Like you said, just a sophomore. I think last year as a freshman, uh, came in and was a huge addition to the team. I mean, one of the best goalkeepers, if not the best, in the A-10. Last year as just a freshman. Now she's got one year under her belt. She knows what to expect uh, out of her own team and those that she's facing uh, I think her confidence is at an all-time high. Her stats are looking great so far. Um, and, and, yeah, like you said, I think that that's, that's the big thing, I think, for the Flyers this year. I think this is an improved team from last year, even though we lost to Tala Jamelli. Uh, we've added some, brought back a lot of the starters from last year. And I think that the whole way throughout the conference play, it's going to be, you know, 
Dayton versus Slu. And if we can make it to that conference championship, I think those are the two teams that we're going to see. Absolutely. And they'll have a big chance to keep it rolling tomorrow, 7 p.m. against IUPUI at Bojan Field. Let's take a look at the men's soccer team. The men's soccer team, tough start to the season, losing their first game uh, at the Wolstein Classic at Ohio State, followed that up with a draw, and then got back home, first game against against IUPUI at Bojan Field, picking up a big win there, but a tough loss against Milwaukee last night. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, both of us were at that Milwaukee game, and the Flyers had some looks. Uh, I think that the score might not really be representative of, of Flyer poor play, necessarily. I think that Milwaukee definitely won that game. They, I wouldn't say that they got lucky or anything like that, but uh, all three goals from Milwaukee came in the second half. Um, at, at halftime, it was 0-0, extremely tight play. Uh, the Flyers had some looks. They had a PK. One of those Milwaukee goals was off of a PK. Um, about five minutes later, Flyers drew their own penalty in the box, and uh, Joseph Meltokoy um, put one just off the bar. Um, and, you know, if that would have been in the back of the net, then, you know, it's at least not a shutout. I think a much more respectable-looking game, and, and, you know, who knows what would have changed the next 20 or 30 minutes um, of that game. But, I mean, in their win against IUPUI, I mean, it was a very dominant win. Absolutely. And f winning that one 4 to nothing, and try to follow up that, you know, with another big win against Milwaukee last night, fell short as Milwaukee played very well. Obviously got that PK goal, and since then kind of ran away with it. But for the Dayton Flyers, comparing them to last year, I mean, for most of the season, a top 25 nationally ranked team. And this year, bringing it back, a lot of players are losing a few, um, but they'll have a chance against a Big Ten opponent in the Michigan State Spartans. Yeah, I think this is a really interesting game. I think especially for the men's team, uh, they haven't played, like, you know, that high level of, of Power 5 soccer yet. Uh, so I think it's a really good test, especially being on the road, uh, getting out of Ohio. You know, it's going to be, um, you know, up in Michigan, and I, I think it'll be a good test for them to see, you know, how far can we push our limits, especially coming off to a, a loss against a school like Milwaukee, you know, another mid-major program, um, not one that you would expect to be a kind of a blowout like that. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how they can respond and how they can pick up their pieces a little bit as we head towards conference play. Yeah, and they'll have a big chance coming up this week. And all Dane Flyer Sports are back in business as we are in our first episode of Season 3 of Flyer Sports. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. I'm Joe Sullivan alongside my partner Sean Vitalis, and we'll see you next week here on Flyer Sports.